Yes, okay, students, I apologize for that. Um, you know, as you are aware, we're just starting this thing and we're all trying to learn through this together. So let's do this as best as we could right now. So our lesson is the brain today. You will see that the slide is talking about the parts of the system, the nervous system. The nervous system is the control center for our bodies, okay? It controls um, every function of our bodies. It's, it's like the, the, the master puppet, I like to say, um, um, coordinating everything in your body. Now, the nervous system is divided into two systems, okay? The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes your brain and the spinal cord. And your peripheral nervous system includes all of your nerves and or neurons that are attached to your brain and your spinal cord. Now for today, we're going to look specifically at the brain, which is a part of the, the central nervous system. And the brain is the master organ of the body. Okay, remember I said it's like the master, it controls everything, all of the different functions and organs of your body. Now the brain is divided into three parts. You have your cerebrum, your cerebellum, and the medulla oblongata. Okay, and here we see a picture of the brain and its structure, how it looks. And here we see the, a diagram of the brain, which shows the three basic regions which we're gonna get into. Now the cerebrum, the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It controls all of your thinking, your memory, your learning, your movements of your face. It is the control center, okay? And the cerebrum is the gray um, surface that has deep folds. If you notice the previous slide, I'm gonna go back there. You're gonna see these folds that kind of look like um, like a cauliflower, I would say, if you're familiar with that. It is made up of two parts. You're gonna have your right cerebral hemisphere and your left cerebral hemisphere, and they are connected together. Here you see a diagram displaying your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere. Okay, and notice that they do come together uh, at a point in the middle. Now your cerebellum, it is located below at the back of your cerebrum. Okay, it is also divided into a right and a left hemisphere, which are also connected together. The cerebellum coordinates and controls all of your skeletal muscles. Okay, so all of your voluntary muscles, all of your voluntary movements or actions, your cerebellum is going to coordinate with that. Uh, for instance, giving smoothness of action, uh, maintaining your balance, and also keeping your muscle tone. Now, if the cerebellum is damaged, you will find that those um, voluntary movements will, okay, so I was explaining to you the location of your cerebellum, okay, which is right uh, at the back of your, your cerebrum, directly beneath it. So this is the location of your cerebellum in relation to the cerebrum, which you will see the mushroom um, appearance of the cerebrum and the cerebellum is located right beneath it. Here you see a diagram of the left and right hemisphere um, in relation to the location of your cerebrum and your cerebellum. So your cerebellum is located at the back of your cerebrum and again controls all of your, basically your voluntary movements, um, your skeletal muscles, your balance, and as well as your posture. Okay, and this is a video. Um, we're going to try to play. Just need you to listen attentively. OK. 
Okay, doesn't seem to be cooperating. Okay, we're going to move along. We're going to move along to the medulla. So your medulla or your medulla, however you would like to say it, is continuous with your spinal cord. Okay, and it contains all of your vital, your vital centers, okay, your vitals like um, your breathing, your heart rate, your blood pressure, all of these things that a nurse would um, check when, as routine when you go to, the, to see a doctor, all of your vitals, you know, that basically makes so that you're alive, okay, all of the signs that says that you're living. So your medulla, you will see it is located at the very top of your spinal cord, okay? So when I teach, I like to say it is the, the smaller hump on that spinal cord. You will see that the larger hump would be the pons, and the smaller secondary hump right beneath that is your medulla. Uh, it's very important to distinguish those two parts as these parts um, can be a little bit obscure on um, diagrams that you would find on tests and national examinations, okay? So that's also very important to distinguish between the pawns and your medulla oblongata. Okay, let's celebrate our brain. I'm going to try this. Let's see if this works. Uh, Ms. Gibson. Yes. I don't know if students are copying notes from the slide because I see one or two of them are saying if you can put the, the notes from the slide back up. So I, I don't know if they're copying the notes from the slide. Okay. Okay, well, these notes, students, they're going to be available to you on the Bahamas Virtual Learning website. Um, so you can always go back and you can print them or if you want to copy them, it is up to you, but it will be available for you, okay? So please don't worry about trying to catch up with the notes more, pay attention on the understanding, okay? Okay, so we're gonna skip this slide. I think it was supposed to be a video. Okay. Okay, here is a uh, diagram that shows basically the different sections of the brain. Um, we call those lobes. You have your front lobe, your temporal lobe, your parietal lobe, your occipital lobe. And of course, beneath that, you have your brain stem, okay, and your cerebellum. So if you look at the cerebrum, you're gonna see that even though it is separated into the left and the right hemisphere, even those hemispheres are then um, separated into its own um, section or lobe that is responsible for different things. For instance, the frontal lobe, which you will find at the very front of the brain is gonna be in charge or control your thinking, your memory, your movement. Okay, your temporal lobe, which is located at either side, is going to be responsible for your hearing, your feelings, your learning. And right in the top middle, okay, you're gonna find your parietal lobe, which is where all of your speech and language are, um, where all those languages are processed. And you're gonna find right at the very back of the cerebrum is your occipital lobe, which is controlled, which controls your vision, okay, your sight. Okay, so questions. This is to just recap what we should have known already from this presentation. What does the cerebrum or the cerebellum control? What is the cerebellum control? Um, can I get some answers in here, please? So you're free to use your question, your chat. If you can tell me what does the cerebellum control, you can go ahead and write in your answers.
Let's see if we can have some type of Christine, are you seeing the responses as well? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm like seeing smoothness of action. I see stability, breathing and posture, skeletal system, memory, balance. Okay. I'm okay, I'm seeing the same thing. Okay, so I'm seeing that half of the responses are on point and half of them are a little bit off. Okay, remember your cerebellum is responsible for your voluntary movements right your voluntary um responses so your balance your coordination i see some people are saying yes that is true let's go to the second question yes i see someone says it controls his skeletal muscles yes you're absolutely correct okay so all of your voluntary movements your balance your posture Okay, let's go to the next question. Which activities are controlled by your medulla? Can I get some questions in there, some answers in there? So I'm seeing heart rate, blood pressure, breathing. Heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, awesome. Yes, yes, that is correct. So remember all of your vitals. All of these signs to let us know that we're alive. Your pulse, your pulse rate, your breathing rate. Yes, correct. And by the responses, it looks like we are on track. And I noticed that someone said involuntary. Oh, Marion Pratt, yes, yes. So if you notice your blood pressure, your heart rate, these are all things that we do not have any control over, which is the definition of an involuntary action. So oh, Marion Pratt, yes, you're spot on with that. Well done, oh, Marion. Yes. Okay. Um, let me put the questions back. What does CNS stand for? Is the screen freezing? I'm seeing central nervous. Everybody's saying it. Yes. Yes, it stands for the central nervous system. Yes, you can use that acronym in place of the actual word. And I have another question which is also very important. I don't think it's on here. Yes, it is actually. So who can name the name, name the two parts of your central nervous system? The two parts of your central nervous system. Okay, so I'm seeing some mixed answers here. I'm trying. Okay, someone is saying my screen is freezing. I'm not seeing the answers anymore. Okay. What time is it? Is that is it that my screen is frozen? I don't know, but I'm not seeing the answers for that question. Mm. It looks like it stopped after a certain amount of answers. I don't know. Okay, I'm seeing some answers now popping up. Brain and spinal cord. Okay, what's the last question that you see? I think I see central nervous system. Yeah, but I, I had to go okay. into the chat to see brain and spinal cord. Not in the question and answer part. I'm not seeing it in that. Oh, part. in the chat part, okay. That's why I got those. Okay, in the chat. Yeah, I got. Oh, I see that where. Okay, so I was actually in the Q and A section, and you yeah, said you're was, in the chat. I was singing so, in Q and A, but now I'm not singing in there anymore. So I went to the chat. Okay, so let me switch over to the chat. 
Okay, so I'm seeing the responses and it looks like the majority of you did get that right. It is made up of your brain and your spinal cord. Okay, don't get it confused with hemisphere, okay? And when we talk about hemisphere, we're really talking about the brain itself. Okay, remember the central nervous system is not only comprised of the brain, but also your spinal cord. And I see that the majority of you um, answered that correctly. Okay, now the next question, um, this will definitely need to be done personally, each of you, drawing a diagram of the brain and label the three parts. Now this is a good indicator um, to, for you to kind of assess yourself to ensure that you know the, first of all, the three parts of the brain as well as their location. So since we cannot really um, deal with that at this time, could you respond to me and tell me in your chat, what are the three parts of the brain? If you can answer that for me, please. I see that some of you are answering in the Q&A and some are answering in the actual chat. Ms. Dean, you're looking in the chat? Um, I went to the Q&A. Let me check back in the chat. You can hear me because I had to move from where I was. Yes, I can hear. Okay. Um, yeah, the chat has it. I'm in the chat. Yeah, I don't think the Q&A. Okay, so I'll switch over to the chat. Yes, I think the chat is where most of them are answering. Yes. Okay, Devonte, Jeffrey, Kiana. Okay, Bianca, okay, it looks like everyone is on target with the answers. The cerebrum, cerebellum, and medulla, okay? You can say also medulla oblongata, okay? And for me personally, I feel that you should use both terms, the medulla oblongata, because there is also another part of your body that has that structure called the medulla. So for just to be very specific, we want to use medulla oblongata when we're referring to the brain. Okay, let's get to the last question here. Describe the cerebrum, okay? Now, you can tackle it. You can talk about the, the structure here. Describe the cerebrum, okay? I um, just want to get a feel of what some of you will come up with. So I'm going to switch over to the chat, and I'm going to look at your responses. I want to see how you would describe the cerebrum. Okay, now remember when we are describing something, you're really talking about, because I didn't say the function, I really want you to describe the structure. Yes, I'm seeing some responses. It has deep folds. Yes, it does. Yes, it is the largest part of the brain. Yes, Craig, it is divided into two hemispheres. Correct, all of those are correct. And of course, yes, the function is that it controls our higher thinking and also our memory. Okay, also it's, it is the part of the brain that does all of our decision making for us. Okay, anything that is voluntary, um, our cerebrum will be uh, responsible for. Okay, just gonna look at some other responses. Okay, yes, yes. It resembles a mushroom because of the folds. Yes, yes, Renault. Yes. Yes, okay. So all of those responses are actually spot on. Okay, so remember your brain consists of those three parts. Okay, the cerebrum, your cerebellum, and your medulla. 
and the brain is also a part of your central nervous system, which includes the spinal cord as well. And you can also see that from the diagrams, the spinal cord is actually attached to the brain. So they work very uh, closely together. The cerebrum makes up 85% of your brain weight. Way to go, Kiana. Yes, it is the largest part of the brain. So yes, it will account for the largest percentage as it relates to, to, to weight. Okay, so that's very good. Okay, Ms. Dean, I think that brings us to our end. Okay, very good lesson, Ms. Gibson. <laughs> yes, um, I think we still have time. I think it's supposed to be 30 to 40 minutes long and we're at the half hour mark. Okay. Um, I don't know, you feel like we should get some more questions from them? I'm sure, so question. So when it's when the time time when the time is up, it just automatically disconnects. So how does that work? Okay, well we're still on this right now. Uh -huh. Yes. So it doesn't seem so at this point. Okay. And he said um, forty I minutes. Know, yes, thirty to forty minutes. Okay. I know a student asked about um, turning in assignments. Right. I saw that. Yes. Well, I really don't like to give information unless I'm totally 100% right. um, sure. Right. So when you continue to log on to these sessions, then those, um, those questions will be answered for you in a way that is clear for everybody. Okay. Okay, what happens when your whole brain gets damaged? Well, if your entire brain gets damaged, you'll be essentially brain dead. And you'll have to be placed on life support, which does all of the functioning to keep you, okay? Remember, your, all of your vitals are controlled by your, your cerebellum. So everything that is needs to function of your body that needs to keep you alive, if your brain is dead, then I guess you'll be put on a, on a machine that will essentially keep you alive. Okay, Denzel, I hope I answered your question. Okay. <laughs> you won't be smart. Um, I think there is a, a video. Let me just, have, you have the video? No, no, uh, I have a question for you. I okay. know a student is asking about um, what if we take health and general science? So I don't know, can the students hear me as well? Oh. Or are they only hearing you, right? Um, can you respond please? Are you also hearing Mr. Steen? If so, please. Yes, they're saying yes. Okay, so I am thinking that um, general science, they're working out the time for that. So I think that will probably be up on the website. I think Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gray, they're trying to slot in general science. So those persons, I think two or three of you asked about general science. Um, you have to check again on the site to see when general science is um, scheduled for. So I'm not certain when it will be up. Um, um, again. Okay. Okay. Also, there is a video. Okay, good. I have it. So, to wrap up this session, let's look at this video. Let's watch this video. It's called The Human Brain uh, Parts and Functions. I'm going to keep the chat up. Want to make sure everyone sees it. Can everyone see the screen? Can you respond by saying yes or no? Yes, we can see a PowerPoint. Okay, uh, no. Yes. Can you see the? Okay, let me. Okay, let me share. Yeah. 
Okay, you should see a YouTube video. Okay, I'm seeing it. And first, down. say the color and note the word. Can everyone see that? Okay. So let's play this video and we're going to follow. in which the word has been written and not read the word. So are you ready? Let's begin. confusing was your brain put to test i know it was so today let's learn about this important organ of our body the brain and were you accidentally reading the word and not speaking out the color don't worry it's not it's called the left right conflict of the brain your right side of the brain tries to say the color and your left side of the brain in you know that the brain is divided into two halves the right half and the left half and both these halves are connected to each other by a bundle of nerve fibers called the corpus callosum so from this view does our brain remind you of anything that can be eaten any nut yes it looks like a walnut and did you know that a walnut is a brain boosting nut which when eaten regularly helps to so like you can see here our brain has wrinkles on its exterior surface and this wrinkly part is called as the cerebrum which makes up the major portion of our brain but not every individual has equal amount of wrinkles these wrinkles indirectly determine the intelligence of an individual you may be wondering how So let me tell you the logic is that the wrinkles are formed to increase the surface area of brain tissue so more the surface area more the number of neurons in the nervous tissue and more the neurons more intelligent an individual is so now we know that cerebrum is associated with the intelligence of an individual now let's look at the brain from a different view so when we change the angle and when we see it from this side we notice that the cerebrum is actually divided into four parts or four lobes we can say and each lobe has different functions that they perform for the body the first one is called the frontal lobe now just by the name can you guess which one of these can be called the frontal lobe yes it is this one the one present in the front now to tell you its function let me give you a math problem can you calculate the sum did you get the right answer The frontal lobe controls problem solving and intellectual activities. So right now, how to solve this problem? Your frontal lobe was actively involved. Facts are that this frontal lobe controls attention, judgment, behavior, and muscle movement. So now let's test our. So on my command, quickly raise your right hand. Good. So your frontal lobe is functioning really well. Let's move to the next lobe. This highlighted lobe here is called the parietal lobe and do you know what it controls? Wait. Let's take a test to see if it functions well. So you have to do as I say, pinch yourself as hard as possible. Come on, do it quickly. Did that hurt? Did you sense any pain? So well, your parietal lobe senses pain. It also helps in visual functions such as reading and understanding statements. I like the lobes in the cerebrum. So let's continue. The next lobe is called the temporal lobe. It controls the visual and auditory memories. So all that you see and hear gets stored in the form of memories in this lobe. Do you all want to test this lobe too? Okay so all that you have to do is listen to the statement memorize it well and repeat it later Are you ready Here we go Jack will cycle to the market and bring tomatoes for his mother 
Did you get it right? You're brilliant. Let's move ahead. The fourth and the last lobe is the occipital lobe. It helps in recognition of color, words, and movements. So let's take a small test for this. So in this moving video here, you have to find hidden words and you have 10 seconds. Let's start. Wow, so quickly we've completed learning about the cerebral lobes along with their functions. Let's move to the second part of the brain. The small bulge at the back of your brain that you see is called as the cerebellum. Just like the cerebrum, this cerebellum is also divided into two halves. It's called as the small brain and it is a very important part of our brain. Compared to the cerebrum, the cerebellum has more number of neurons and it controls essential body functions like balance, coordination and posture, allowing us to move properly and maintain our structure. So your cerebellum is the reason that you can stand on one leg, jump around, run and maintain your body posture and structure. Now both these parts that we just discussed are superficially present on the exterior of our brain. But tell me one thing, who tells you when you're hurt or angry or sad or excited about something? We link these emotions to our heart, but is it really your heart? No, it's your brain. The part that handles your emotional side is hidden below this wrinkly portion or the cerebrum. So in our next video, we'll dissect our brain and try to reach the depth of it, where we'll be studying two more important parts of our brain, which lie in the interiors. Let me remind you all that we have complete courses okay. for each and every chapter in mathematics. Okay, for grade can everybody hear me? Yes. Are we still together? Okay, what did you think about that video? Kind of um, condensed most things that we were talking about today or that we should have learned. Okay, it's, it was laggy, okay. Okay, it was too fast. Okay, well, the good thing about it is that um, with all of these sessions, all of the PowerPoints, all of the videos, they're all going to be uploaded on the Bahamas virtual learning website. Okay, so if it was like, you can always go back and review it yourself. That's the good thing about this platform. Yes, it was informing and it was interesting, Jeffrey. Um, the beginning was very uh, interesting. How did everyone do at the beginning? Were you able to correctly um, differentiate the words from the colors? Did anyone get mixed up? Yes, so did I, yes. Yes, so can anyone tell me um, what was the point of that? What was the reason behind asking you to name names? Or why did we get mixed up? Why did we get mixed up with the name versus the color? What was the point of that? What did it show us? Um, thank you all for being a part of this session. Um, as we continue, um, both you and I will get a better uh, feel for this. So thank you for participating and um, we'll see you all at the next session. Thanks for being a part of this one, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. the muscular system. So I want you to put the muscular system topic, the muscular system, underline it. Okay, everybody should be done, okay? So let's talk about the functions of the muscular system, okay? Muscles in our body help us to move from place to place. Muscles also do the following. One, they help our heart to beat, okay? In our heart, muscles are, Okay, so they help our heart to beat. They help blood to circulate. 
okay? Muscles are found in our capillaries, in our veins, in our arteries. So they help to push blood throughout the body. They help us to digest food or help food to digest. So muscles are found in our esophagus, in our stomach, in our intestines, okay? So they work together to make sure that our food is digested. There are more than 600 muscles in the human body. Interesting enough, okay? Write that down for me, please. Okay, so there are three types of muscles. I don't know why I put muscle cells, but same thing. There are three types of muscle cells within the body. They are striated, also called skeletal, also called striped muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Write that down, please. Okay, this is the end of the day, guys. So if you need me to go back a slide afterwards, I can do that. I only see like six or seven duns. Okay, so the first type of muscle called the striated, the skeletal or the striped muscle, you can use those words interchangeably, okay? And it says this type of muscle is used for movement, okay? It is attached to bone by cords called tendons. When these muscles receive instructions from the neurons, they contract or relax, causing bone to move. They are called voluntary muscles because you can decide when to move them, okay? So all the muscles found in your forearms, okay, in our chest cavity, in our legs, all of those muscles are striated muscles, okay? Okay, this is the end of the day, guys. So if you need me to go back a slide afterwards, I can do that. Okay, so the first type of muscle called the striated, the skeletal or the striped muscle, you can use those words interchangeably, okay? And it says this type of muscle is used for movement, okay? It is attached to bone by cords called tendons. When these muscles receive instructions from the neurons, they contract or relax, causing bone to move. They are called voluntary muscles because you can decide when to move them, okay? So all the muscles found in your forearms, okay, in our chest cavity, in our legs, all of those muscles are striated muscles, okay? These are the muscles attached to the bones in which we decide, okay? So we decide when to move our hands, we decide when to move our legs and walk. So they are called, they are known as voluntary muscles because we volunteer to do them, right? Good. So when we decide to have these muscles contract or have these muscles relax, we can do so. Okay, so always remember that these are the muscles responsible for body movement. And notice I have movement in bold so please if you don't have a, high, a highlighter every time you see bold in one of my presentations please underline that word okay the next word voluntary muscles underline that word also okay something i forgot to mention about um the striated muscles is if you look at the diagram that i have here on the side you can actually see the little stripes right the small the small diagram you can actually see the little stripes in the muscle, right? You see where it says skeletal muscle fiber, nucleus, and striation, right? So that's why we call them striated muscles, okay? Smooth muscles. So these smooth muscles are found within body organs, okay? So smooth muscles are found in your lungs, in your kidneys, in your uterus, okay? in your esophagus, and it says these muscles can undergo a series of wave-like movements called peristalsis that pushes food along the digestive tract, right? And remember we said that one of the functions of the muscular system is that the muscles help in digestion. So this way it starts, right? When you swallow food, smooth muscle cells are found in your tube or in your esophagus right? 
and so it pushes the food downward downward right and we call this process peristalsis okay so these muscles control your internal movements such as food moving around in your intestines and i have a question when you, when you guys are done oh that was the question that i had okay the question that i have is and i think we only have two more slides so please bear with me guys the question that i have is do you think that these muscles are voluntary or involuntary based on the fact that they are found in or in the organs of the body you guys know how to use the raise raise the hand um enrica enrica you think they're involuntary good they are involuntary right because we don't decide when our food is traveling throughout our digestive tract do we think about it no right it just happens so these muscles can track and relax involuntarily okay so they're involuntary muscles unlike our skeletal or our striated muscles what we know are voluntary muscles good yes right we don't have control over what our organs do good okay and it says these muscles are also found in the blood vessels where they assist in the flow of blood we don't think about that either we don't think about when our arteries and our veins are carrying blood throughout our body it just happens okay so these are involuntary muscles okay and if you look at the diagram with the muscle you'll see that unlike our striated muscle it doesn't have those lines right it's smooth it doesn't have those um striated fib fibers found in them okay and it says the smooth muscle fibers are under involuntary control and a pair spindle shaped um no one more slide last slide I think. I think, guys. Well, just about the last slide. The last slide is just a picture. Okay. So, lastly, is the cardiac, the cardiac mass muscle. Sorry. And anytime you guys hear the word cardiac, you should always think of the heart. Okay. So, if you think of a cardiologist, someone who deals as a doctor who deals in the heart heart surgery and all that if you hear cardiac arrest okay similar to a heart attack okay so cardiac muscles so we should already know these muscles are found only in the heart and i should have that should be underlined only in the heart and helps it to contract to pump the blood these muscles are another word i should have bolded involuntary because it never stops working throughout our lifetime. So these muscles are always working in our heart. Okay? We don't think about it. We just push blood from the heart through the rest of our body. Okay? So underline the word only and involuntary for me, please. Only two people are done. Who else is done? Okay, and the last slide. Um, I had you guys in my class. Oh, and that's a horrible diagram for me to try to make y'all sketch. If I had you guys in my class and I could physically see you, I'd give you this diagram, right? Where you can actually remember how these how these different types of muscle cells look. Because in your examination, when you do BJC, they usually do this. They give you the diagram. And they ask, what type of muscle cell is this? So if I were you, I would spend about two minutes and I would quickly sketch those diagrams as best you could, okay? I mean, that's just what I would do because I like good grades. I like to do well. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, 